Hello, I'm Alison Duana. I'm a goddess asteroid astrologer and Gene Keys guide. Um, I've been feeling really drawn to the plant kingdoms this week and through this full moon that's just happened. And um, I wanted to share about uh, a really amazing trans-Neptunian object called Terahan Hayawaku. <laughs> That's a real mouthful, isn't it? Um, so I was feeling really connected to him. Um, he's at 20 degrees Pisces at the moment, and he is um, uh, in Jinki 22, which is this involutionary divine feminine energy in the Gene Keys. So he's in quite an important place, really, at the moment. Um, so this is from Kelly Hunter's Colouring In book, uh, which I just bought. And this is the first one I've done, which is a really nice way just to actually spend a period of time tuning into the meaning of these TNOs, because not that much research has been done on them as yet. Um, so I like to get my own personal take on what's going on and the way it kind of comes to me. So um, let me give you a bit of information about Tehran first of all. So he's discovered on the 20th of August 2001 um, and as you'll probably know, many of these bodies are named after um, indigenous gods and goddesses. So Terohan Hayawaku is an Iroquois um, god, and he's the grandson of um, a star being who falls to earth and she's pregnant. So she has two sons. She has Tehran is the good son. He's um, he's a farmer and he brings um, the mysteries of agriculture to earth. Um, so this is a huge thing in our turning point in human history. One of the main reasons why we have been so successful as human beings is our ability to grow and cultivate plants to eat um, and so um, I just want to kind of invoke that the miracle of that because you know it's something I guess we take for granted now um, years ago in Birmingham in Britain where I lived I worked in an organic garden and um, we would take children from the inner city around the garden and let them have a play in nature and I was shocked really at how few of them knew that peas were plants that grows you know they kind of thought it was a, a manufactured thing because they'd only ever seen it come out of a freezer um, and you know I was very lucky um, my parents always had a vegetable garden so um, you know, I feel very privileged actually to just have had that healthy food as a child and my mom was very against anything with E numbers in and all of that. She was kind of way ahead of her time really. So we always ate very um, healthy food um, and I really appreciate that now, you know, what, what a blessing that is to have this knowledge about food. So from this time, um, we have a, quite a split to where we are now with industrial food production, use of insecticides. Um, I've been reading a book recently called Waterlog by a guy called Roger Deakin. It's, it's written kind of quite a long time ago. Um, and um, and there's a book from that sort of time called Peregrine. And, and Peregrine falcons actually nearly died out in Britain because of the use of pesticides. So we've known for a long, long time, you know, 
poison, put loads of poison on things, well, of course, the humans and the animals are going to get poisoned too because we are all interconnected and related to each other. And these are not just problems from the past, they're big problems um, today as well. Uh, yeah, so for me, Terahan Hayawaku is asking us to think consciously about our relationship to plants, to really honour this relationship and to, um, you know, bring back maybe some of the um, old ways of doing agriculture. So what we see here is that he has blue corn and pumpkins and there's a third plant, I can't remember what it is, that grow all together and they kind of support each other. So you don't need um, chemicals, you know, you need to grow different kinds of food together so that they naturally support each other. Um, if you haven't read the book by Robin Wall Kimmerer called Braiding Sweetgrass, it's absolutely fantastic on all of this. And she reclaims her wisdom um, from her indigenous background. She's actually doing a degree in botany and she's the only Native American woman <laughs> in her class, you know, so... Um, so then she kind of meets people from her ancestral tribe and kind of goes back into it. And anyone who reads that book will really get a sense of the importance of um, this whole journey with the plant kingdom. And, uh, and so many people I know say it's their favorite, one of their favorite books. It's a really good read. Um, and she's got another one called Gathering Moss as well. So the other issue going on with um, uh, Teheron Hayawaku is he has a brother who's the dark one. <laughs> you know, he's all about weeds and vermin. I don't really think in those terms because I think even plants we call weeds are valuable and animals we call vermin are valuable too but he has this polarization of dark and light anyway so that's another one of his um healing qualities i guess um yeah and finally just a few things to say um when he was discovered on the 20th of august 2001 and as he was being named, um, the, this is the first time the USA kind of begrudgingly admitted that global warming might exist. Only might, <laughs> but it was a step forward. So, um, you know, he seems to be connected to a big turn in our consciousness around accepting all the stuff around industrial food, pesticides, the effect on our health and well-being and um, saying actually no we need to return at this fundamental level with the plant kingdom to begin to live in harmony with nature uh, and I really like that there's a tortoise there because it's all about slowing down and uh, yeah not trying to rush everything through chemicals and fast means, you know, we don't have to do that. So namaste, uh, thank you Terahan Hayawaku, I hope I have shared your message well. <laughs>